Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What industry do you hope won't exist in 10 years? The concert ticket mafia, ticket master, stub hub, live nation. Fuck them, ETA. I know those entities aren't really an entire industry. They basically have the market monopolized, though. No shit. A few years ago I wanted to get Garth Brooks tickets. The venue had this system set up to keep scalpers aka ticketmasters from grabbing a bunch of tickets. I logged into the website at the exact time the website said and had to keep hitting refresh for a fucking hour and a half. By the time I could get in there was one ticket left. One. Then guess who started advertising tickets? Yup. Fucking T-I-C-K-E-T-M-A-S-T-E-R-S. Fuck M. The venue probably had a small number of tickets actually available on the site. And then sold most of them to Ticketmaster intentionally. Ticketmaster's entire business model is being the bad guy so venues can secretly charge higher prices. Those bullshit fees don't all go to Ticketmaster. They get split between Ticketmaster and the venue. Edit. To be more clear, many artists get cuts as well. And Ticketmaster is now massive enough they own many venues. Telemarketers. I think it's funny that we already have telemarketing robots calling call screening robots. Personally I just use Tasker to auto drop any call from a number that isn't in my contacts. The problem I have is that all of the telemarketing calls I get, either from bots or from real people, are calling me using phone numbers spoofed from my contacts list. I can't refuse to answer a call from my daughter. But I'm really pissed when it's not my daughter calling. But some scammer using my daughter's phone number. Anything involving cold calling, or massive phone call farms pimping random. Shit. Edit. I did not expect 17k upvotes. Ha ha tie. I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Which car? <laughs> Mommy. Family vloggers. They're sinister. A podcast I listened to did a 7 asterisk episode deep dive and it was horrifying. There needs to be laws to protect these exploited children and in 10 to 20 years we're going to see a lot of these kids telling their horror stories and suing their parents. Edit to add. The podcast is called Some Place Underneath. It's episodes 56 to 62. Yup. A lot of really gross child exploitation happening in those areas. Been happening for at least 10 years now with toy review, type of channels and the like on YouTube. If a child is featured in the video, it should be demonetized IMO. That poor Ryan's world kid. Well, the parents aren't poor. Poor fucking kid. The troubled teen industry. Look up Nexpo's video on Alan School and you'll see what I mean. Abusing minors for money shouldn't be an industry. Edit. Didn't realize this would get so much traction. So if you're interested in helping advocate against TTI, head over to our troubled teens and join our little crew. As a former student, prisoner, I could not second this enough. The facility I was sent to got shut down a number of years ago but there are still many other thriving programs. Some of the girls who also went there are now working on a documentary to shed some light on how counterintuitive and downright criminal these places are. One of the facilities I went to recently was shut down because of a class action lawsuit. I'm very proud TBH. Fuck those creepy groomers who drove us to the middle of nowhere and told us we were worthless and nobody would value us and then drove us back and pretended like nothing happened to the other staff, therapists. Phew I'm so glad I get to speak whenever I want now and eat food or drink water whenever I want now. That was definitely beyond insane. MLMs, pyramid schemes. The amount of FB posts I see that are like, join my book exchange. Send six books, get 36 back. Quote, variations include wine bottles, kids toys, etc. Tells me pyramid schemes are not going anywhere. Because people are not smart enough to realize these are literally the definition of a pyramid scheme. That's why I have this fantastic new idea for a business model, the inverted funnel plan. Instead of your money funneling down into some fat cat's new yacht fund, you flip it around and start funneling money to you. And the best part is, the more people you hire, the wider your funnel. <laughs> Pharmacy benefit managers, PBMs. Look them up. They're basically blood-sucking middlemen that sit between hospitals and health insurers. Supposedly created to control prescription drug costs and manage formularies. But they actually drive prices up. One of the many terrible causes of high medical costs in the states. It's not the PBMs alone that drive up the price. It's the combination of every single company in the supply chain. PBMs are often easily blamed by the other companies to hide their own drug price inflation because it's easy to blame a negotiator and call them a middleman. Don't get me wrong, I agree with you PBMs are terrible too. But wouldn't it just be better if medical insurance went away? Or even better, eliminating the industry of corporate lobbying that prevents the government from going after the medical industry? As someone who works on these topics, here are my opinions. 1. The complexity itself is a big part of the problem. 2. 
Small reforms are hard, usually because of money. Even big reforms like Obamacare were a mess, mainly because of money. 3. If you want good reforms, look for an entire foreign system to copy. Find one adapted to the way the US currently works. 4. It will work better if most decision makers in medicine are very afraid that keeping the current system is going to cost them money. For example, imagine a patient strike, where everything elective is delayed, or some alternate non-governmental way of delivering services grows fast, or there are big successful lawsuits. One of the wildcards is something medicine does not see coming. The biggest effects would not be for a single condition, but broad groups.